Good afternoon. Today we have a press conference with representatives of the Coordinating Council. Our speakers today are Andrei Gorov. Hello, Andrei. Olga Kovalikova. Hello, Olga. Tatiana Marinich. Hello, Tatiana Homich. Just a reminder that we have an English interpretation available. If you prefer to listen to us in this language, please select the appropriate audio track. Also, if you choose Russian, you will listen to us in Belarusian and Russian. Please ask your questions in the chat room or ask your raise your hand in a chat room, uh, you will have the opportunity to ask your question using your voice. Thank you. Let's begin. Who's ready to start with the introductory? Welcome and remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Do we have interpretation from Belarusian or from Russian? We have interpretation from both languages, so you are free to use any language you want, be it Russian or Belarusian. Hello and welcome. I would like to thank all the journalists for joining us today. I would like to thank Press Club for organizing the event. I will tell you a few words about the idea of the representation of the post of representative in the Coordinating Council. The Coordinating Council represents the Belarusian society. Over the year now, the will colleagues will be look, we have been looking for options of uh, ending this political stalemate, political crisis. Unfortunately, we have been in this for too long and the tasks that we had at first, like solving the political crisis, preserving the sovereignty of Belarus, are still the very important items on our agenda. The Coordinating Council has recognition, international recognition. We have been recognized by the European Parliament and the United States Congress as the representative body of the Belarusian people. It's uh, worth mentioning that the representation is a notion that we came up with this year and last month. It is done to support Belarusians and Belarusian communities both inside Belarus and represent these communities outside. Representation and the representatives in the Coordinating Council will work on con concrete uh, issues. We have already selected representatives. They don't have managerial functions in the CC, but they represent particular directions and areas. Today, it's uh, business and innovations. Here we have Tatiana Marinich. Eastern Partnership is represented by Valeria Matskevich, the civil society Andrei Gorov. Culture is represented by Andrei Kurechik, political prisoners Tatiana Homich, human capital development Volga Kavalikova, digital transformation Alex Shkor, law Mikhail Kiryuk, and sport Nadezhda Stapchuk. All these people are representatives that were appointed to their post after the voting in the Coordinating Council and after the presented their programs and plans for particular periods of representatives in the CC are elected for six months. Every month they uh, file a report telling what they have done. Also their work will be covered by special information channel of the CC. The activities 
will all be not done. It is these areas that I mentioned. We have competencies, we have expertise. Therefore, these areas are a priority now, but we don't exclude the possibility of the appearing representatives of other in other areas and in general the coordinating council is open for feedback unfortunately to the harsh impressions it's not particularly very easy to do in belarus but it's important to discuss and the task of the representatives is to promote and strengthen the positions of the coordinating council and the authority and position of Belarus in the world because they have the necessary competencies for that and they will be representing the coordinate council as well this is a, what i wanted to tell you at the beginning of my uh, introductory remarks but every representative has their own plan unfortunately we don't have all representatives with us today but some of them will tell you about their plans Thus, I, uh, I think we should start with Tatiana Marinch now. I'll give floor to Tatiana. Thank you very much, Olga. Indeed, a business and innovation economy, innovative economy. As a representative of the Cardinal Council on this field, I would really like that the voice of the business community for the first time over the many years would sound bright and clear loud and clear in the political campaign. I want this voice that is heard inside Belarus to be heard both inside and outside of Belarus, abroad. Why? Because in fact, the business community have always been, as well as been outside the political field. This was a given. The businesses whose owners have a political stance have been threatened but the democrat the real democracy is a means to have your own political stance despite your background nobody felt better being threatened not single initiative has ever been promoted using threats including today this will not pass. This is not possible. The business community, in particular, the innovative economy, has been paralyzed in Belarus. We know that tens of thousands of IT specialists have left Belarus. These are experts whose knowledge and experience are in demand outside of Belarus. Many of them are ready to participate in various initiatives supporting democratic changes. We know very well that the people who are still inside Belarus, they feel uh, uh, that they are under pressure due to their political views, due to the worsening of the business climate and political climate. But, but private business in Belarus is uh, something that doesn't have the support infrastructure, but it covers one third of all the workforce in the country. It's almost 1.5 million people. So we don't want that even more entrepreneurs would leave the country. But it is those who have dignity or have a, who can make decisions that usually leave Belarus. I would like to use this press conference to invite the entrepreneurs and the representatives of the business community, irrespective of where their whereabouts, Belarusia or abroad, in order to together start working on priority areas, priority areas that are confronted they confront in the business community in Belarus. Three main areas. First, help create the alternative support for the business sector. 
because as i said the existing infrastructure does not work it's non-existent so irrespective of whether where Belarus businesses are inside or outside Belarus, they need to understand what kind of activity they could get and when, including financial consultancy and, sec and so on. Second area is creation of the consultancy platform. It's the foundation of the future of democratic Belarus. Innovation, startups, technology is a foundation that can help boost Belarusian economy in the future. For that, we need to preserve the Belarusian talent. Even though many talented people have left, they still require uh, financial support and consultancy support. I think whether you are in Belarus, California, in Europe, and if you have ideas, please write to us. We're ready to discuss them, to think about the future of Belarus. The third priority is the new business agenda for the new Belarus. Today, we need to understand together with the business community that in the new Belarus, democratic Belarus, all the conditions for development of the private sector and the economy will be created. Most important thing here is the freedom, the freedom to take decisions and to develop the most creative projects. As I said, it is very important to preserve the talented people. Many Belarusians working in the IT field are ready to support the democratic Belarus to develop and to form, shape new projects. In this respect, I would like to announce our new project, such as Hub of Solidarity. These are hubs uniting Belarusians striving for democratic Belarus. It is based on the unique strategy of the tech potential, IT potentials, and on the one hand, on and civic activists on the other hand, who want to help Belarus today. And we'll be working on the project of the future based on the technology. These are the projects in the area of the social mobility, healthcare, IT that will be very much in demand in the future Belarus and will also speed up the change. The first hub of this kind will be open in Vilnius in September based on the Imagros business hub. I hope that we will open similar hubs in other countries as well where we have talented Belarusians. would like to know that all this work would have been impossible without the participation and active work of our partners abroad. Therefore, I believe that every representative, not only me as a representative of the business area, every representative of the current council believes it's very important that it's to maintain contact contacts within our partners abroad. Here, we do not only represent the business interests, but also those of various layers of the society. Because among them, among us, we have representatives of many fields. In the framework of international cooperation, we're preparing the first visit of the CC Council, Presidium and representatives to Spain to learn more about the experience of Spain and other European countries. I believe that today this international work and activities should first of all give positive signals to the Belarusian society. One of such important messages we believe is could be the uh, visa-free access of Belarusians to the EU. This will actually help exchange develop tourists, exchange of students and so on. On the side of the EU, it would mean recognition that Belarusians are fighting for democracy. And that would be a most important positive message for the Belarusian society. 
in general, I hope that together with our colleagues in Europe, we'll be able to continue this dialogue. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to answer your questions in more detail. Now I'll give floor to my colleagues. Uh, Andre, please. Hello, I'd like to say a few words about the civil society in Belarus that is now under attack by the state. As far as we know in, in Belarus currently, the authorities are uh, liquidating at least 186 organizations uh, of the civil society. This is the, mm, the biggest purge of such kind since 1999, when the state again re-registered and uh, started the procedure of registration of the civil society organizations. When people are under pressure, People are, persecu are persecuted, subjected to arrest searches. This is an unprecedented situation, and this is the harshest attack that has been experienced by the civil society representatives of the last 27 years or since 1991. But here we need to understand the civil society means not only organizations that are being persecuted, if we consider the sector of initiatives, organizations that exist in Belarus, there are many more of them than those that uh, have come under purge. Overall, the this sector in Belarus includes about two, three thousand organizations. They could be registered or non-registered in Belarus registered in Belarus or abroad as public organizations. Or we can talk about organizations that have not been registered, but still exist and operate. So when we can consider what is happening in Belarus and that some organizations have been liquidated, we need to understand that's not the whole picture. That's not a, a defeat, total defeat of the civil society. The civil society will survive and come out of this even stronger. I want to note that the civil society in Belarus is still experiencing the growth and uh, a rise that uh, started in this sector in uh, 2020, when thousands of new people joined the civil society initiatives all around the country. Those are formal, informal, professional initiatives and so on. All this movement significantly enriched the civil society sector in Belarus, and this will continue its existence whether the Belarusian authorities want this or not. One more aspect that it needs, to be, needs to be mentioned is that the attack on the civil society is not only about the public sector, but also the in individual practices. Today, the repressive practices of Belarusian state shift from the level of uh, the public sphere and the various initiatives to the intellectual sphere. So the Belarusian authorities are now interfering with the private life of people. They uh, come to the people's apartments and arrest people when they are getting together to celebrate birthdays. So basically, they interfere in the zone of the Belarusian thinking and ideas. 
by rest and the representatives of the factories of thought like Tatiana Kuzina, Valeria Kostigova. Today they are kept in a jail for wrong thoughts, wrong thinking. Mande Maros Vladimir Matskevich, a well-known public figure and philosopher. And this makes the Belarusian regime of uh, the 2020-2021 similar to the highest totalitarian regimes that existed in the 20th century, both communist and fascist regimes. In conclusion, I would like to say that the only way to overcome this crisis today is a development, a further development of the civil society. Because if we can count on a, on a better, brighter future of Belarus, it needs to be taken care of by the conscience, by the hands, by the intellectual potential of people represented by the civil society in Belarus. Thank you. Thank you, Andrei. Right now, we give floor to Tatiana Homich. Hello, my name is Tatiana Homich. I represent the headquarters of Viktor Babarika. I'm the sister of the Maria Kolesnikova, who is a prisoner of conscience who has been in prison for over a year. Today, we have 652 political prisoners, and their number is continually growing, continuously growing. These numbers do not reflect the real number of politically motivated criminal cases, of which there are more than 1,000. The political prisoners appear every day they are the people who have been arrested, have been deprived of their liberty, of their liberty. Today, when the laws don't work, the international legal mechanisms don't work, and any activity inside Belarus, political or civil, just like uh, business practices become almost impossible. When people come to meet the relatives at jail, coming out of jail, they uh, can also get arrested. Regarding Maria Kolesnikova, I've been working on this problem for over a year. I believe it's very important to develop a work in this field because this figure, this number of political prisoners is simply incredible, is uh, awful. What I do, I inform political institutions, international organizations regarding the situation in Belarus. Here we inform international organizations, we write reports, human rights organizations, we uh, speak in front of the MP in the European Parliament, we work with the lawyers, trying to protect lawyers from getting disbarred and uh, trying from to help them retain their licenses. Many people need their help, and also many people who are kept in jail need our further support. Another project of mine is called the Godfather, Godparent for Political Prisoners. This was created by the human rights organizations in Germany and Switzerland. Over 200 politicians are actually working with this. Here we also launched a campaign called "Somebody, if somebody can, doesn't see or notice political prisoners, we'll show them. What is a godparent? It is a lawyer, it's a public figure who speaks for a political prison, who is their voice speaking for them from outside prison. Every person must have a voice like this. At the same time, just like a, a, the system of a political prisoner, I know how important it is to have the moral support. We want to develop this 
work so that the public figures, political figures from other countries would more actively communicate with the family members of the political prisoners, support them, help them. The moral support should not be forgotten, should not be underestimated. We also plan to actively involve uh, the members of diaspora in many countries of the, of the world. Here we hope they will help us and make this work more upscale. In the framework of uh, public campaigns, we also plan to uh, hold cultural events all around the world to support political prisoners. Recently, we launched a project, an initiative together with the Belarusian musicians called Music from Belarus, where in various countries of Europe, during a gig, musicians tell about political prisoners. There have been such instances in Ukraine, Germany, Poland, Italy, and so on. It's a, one of the ways to get the message across to the people, and the builders and musicians who, of whom there are a lot all around the world can do this to support the political prisoners to make their own contribution. As I said, diaspora is uh, doing great work now. Distend.by among others. Of course, the cooperation with the Curtin Council allows to, and the mandate of the Curtin Council will allow to more effectively communicate with uh, our foreign partners and to strengthen the Curtin efforts inside other initiatives. I'm sure that together we'll be able to do much more. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tatiana. I will add a few words. If I may, the Coordinating Council has always been aimed at working inside of Belarus, and many members, a majority of the members of the CC are still in Belarus. We're looking for new ways to, of cooperation inside Belarus. You probably know that the Coordinating Council, together with other democratic forces, has a passed a launch strategy that we are actively coordinating with other representatives like Svetlana Tikhanovska. Uh, now, the political agencies and civil organizations. It is important that together we're implementing this strategy, looking for ways to work. Another important uh, work we believe is the work with international partners. The international strategy that we're planning to implement plays a major role here. I believe the voice of Belarusians should be sounding more loud for our international partners. We should get experience from other countries in terms of transformation pro process. We need to strengthen democracy and, and this agency of, and this representation mechanism is, has been created to help committed Belarusians to promote our agenda, to collect information from the communities that they represent, to show how to develop our cooperation with international partners to strengthen these ties. Our representatives will hold open discussions, will present analytical materials, participate in international conferences, will be uh, offering our assistance to the communities presented uh, by the representatives. Together with my work at the government and council, also develop the human capital. I believe that in Belarus, there's a big number of people and Belarusians are very professional. And uh, 20, the, 20, the year 2020 
show that the oceans have a huge potential, a huge number of solidarity and innovative ideas can be implemented in various sectors. We are witnessing now a wave of immigration, various representatives of Belarusian experts uh, community are moving abroad. The activists who joined the movement in 2020, both inside the country and outside the country, should receive new knowledge as to how to build new democratic Belarus. Unfortunately, it, it wasn't a swift victory for us in 2020. So we're now looking for political activities. We are looking at what can affect the situation in Belarus. We understand that there is a long-term work in Belarus, including the educational aspect. Here we must organize the educational programs, lobby such programs at the political level, including the launching platforms for education, for professional education. Tatiana Maric has already said a few words about the solidarity hubs that are planned to be launched in Lithuania, Poland, and in Ukraine, where a huge number of Belarusians live, so that these Belarusians work for Belarus, learn new culture, and uh, get, learn new experience for democratization. And for me, a great example is the situation in Ukraine, when after 2014, many experts from Poland, European Union, went there to set up democratic process, set up work in many fields and areas. It's very important that Belarusians, who can now receive new competencies in the EU, would return to Belarus in the future and uh, build their country And I hope Belarus in the future will be an example of a talented, peaceful change. We'll do our best. All members of the current council will do their best for these changes to shape as fast as possible, as soon as possible. It's not a quick process, so we're looking for new ways of work to keep Belarus on the agenda of other countries. Thank you. If there are questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. I would like to remind you that you can ask questions in the chat or you can raise your hand in the chat. We'll give you a microphone first. Question from the chat. What is the major difference between the representatives of the ACC and the Svetlana Tikhanovska office representatives. Thank you. Thank you for this question. In fact, uh, we would not like to look for differences. Here we are all working towards a single goal, but I see that the representatives of the Coordinating Council, it's a representative body of the Belarusian society, while the representatives of the Svetlana Tikhanovska team are representing various fields. So uh, considering the managerial potential that we have, the little experience, managerial access that we have means that we will not be able to use all the opportunities to promote our agenda at the international level. So uh, we think we and our presence will be um, another assistance, a help to what already exists now. Thank you. Uh, and uh, good afternoon. would like to talk further about the diaspora of Belarusians in Vilnius, Warsaw, and other capitals. Aren't you afraid that your plans or initiatives will be overlapping the efforts of Svetlana Tikhanovskaya headquarters, the work of uh, 
now in Warsaw. And if they don't overlap, there'll be an impression. The foreign partners will have a, an impression that you are competing with each other and will be lack of understanding of who actually represents Belarus. A free movement and the movement of opponents of Lukashenko's regime. I'm uh, highlighting this because the structure of political diaspora currently, and I mean the Belarusian diaspora abroad, is becoming unclear even for experts working with Belarus for many years. What can we say about the foreign politicians don't work with Belarus every day and all of a sudden they have a question, who is actually responsible for struggling with the uh, Belarusian regime, and fighting with the Belarusian regime? Andrei, please. I would like to answer this question. Thank you for this remark. I would love to the for such remarks to come more. And the structures who want to be leaders here I want them to see more of such remarks and questions. Because one of the important questions here is the question of consolidation and unity and the joined programs. But this is clearly needs to be discussed further. But we have some problems here, but I can assure you that the major forces here, just like uh, it was when the Curtin Council was forced, are represented by the Atlantic Canal Scan headquarters, is the Coordinating Council, the the structure of the Belarusian diaspora, the United People who had to leave Belarus. It is now, the now, and some political headquarters like the party Razum or together, headquarters of Mitra Babarika and less significant structures and bodies that are part of the joint communication system. So this structure now exists. Unfortunately, we cannot say that there's a single body and we cannot say that there's only one body who is in charge of everything and coordinating everyone. That's not the fact. There's a system of communication coordination between various bodies. I would love to see more central centralized approach and unity, but we have what we have. The analysts will have to figure it out for themselves. I would like to add here that in political sphere, there's also a multitude of opinions, but we are moving towards the single goal. We have, may have different tactical goals in the protest, but as far as the coordinating council is concerned, for me, it is also a platform for coordination, coordinating political forces because the representatives of various political borders, including those mentioned by Andre, they are all part of the coordinating council. We're trying to coordinate them all. And if possible, we're trying to join these initiatives. Unfortunately, we cannot always join uh, some more active or radical initiatives because the majority of the CFC live in Belarus. Considering the level of repression now in the country, we cannot always be harsh in our statements. Although we are trying always to evaluate and assess what is happening around us. Just like Andrei said, we, there's room for improvement, but we're doing very well coordinating concrete activities and campaigns. We'll be doing our best to improve our efforts here. Thank you. Next 
Svetlana Matskevich. Hello, colleagues. I have a question to the CIS in general. You, uh, time to time, you refer to an agenda. What kind of uh, agenda do you have now? What is the event in the near future that should unite us? I don't know if you understood the, the question. So what is the this agenda? Or how will the Curtin Council react to the supposed referendum and the new constitution that are discussed right now? Who will answer this question? Andrei? Fine, I'll start. That's a great question. I can uh, acknowledge the fact that we cannot always set the agenda, but indeed, in terms of referendum, we already had several Zoom sessions involving various actors, so we are trying to come up with a new scenario that will react to the statements by Lukashenko. We have launched our campaign regarding the Constitution. For Belarusians, I think it's a, a not the easiest campaign for Belarusians. As to the referendum, as far as the referendum is concerned, we have this communication. Yeah. We're coming up with political demands regarding the referendum. It will be a public process. We talk about the political events. What we have on our agenda is a referendum. We're not sure about the concrete date. The elections in uh, of the MPs on 2023, this will definitely happen. We're not thinking about these events alone, but in the next couple of months, I don't see a significant political activity that should be undertook to seriously change this the status quo. But things may come up and we are coordinating such activities among others. That is a very difficult question that you asked us because there is no clear cut answer. We have, we all have a feeling that we are inside the moment of change. When not neither of the sides is ready to make concessions, it's difficult to say what happens next. The sanctions that were introduced against Belarus by different steps, particularly the American one, once they'll uh, have a negative effect, a significant effect. At the end of the year, I, su I suppose there will be some more pressure on the regime and maybe the regime will make some concessions. When the regime will get accustomed to the sanctions, and that's my opinion, it will be more difficult to make further steps in this direction. Thank you. A question from uh, Mr. Strauchis. The first question, could you please repeat how the representatives that you mentioned were appointed? And does this mean new members of the current council and the previous members of CC are no longer members of the CC. Andrigorov. No, all the members of the coordinating council that were in the curtain council are still there, but since a number of issues are important for us, particularly important for us, we have appointed the speakers, representatives of particular areas or fields. 
it's a public voice of uh, the CC in general on these issues. All the representatives of the CC are members of the representatives of the CC were the members of the CC that were appointed or elected by the voting of the CC, general voting. Well, actually, we voted for the person with a particular program of actions. Tatiana Marinch would like to add something. It's important to focus on, on the following, that uh, the representatives are not appointed, but elected. They have been elected, not appointed. I would like to give floor now to Tatiana Shitsova. Good afternoon, colleagues. Can you hear me? Great. Thank you very much for your remarks. I would like to continue exchange of opinions after what uh, Camille said and Andre answered. This uh, some uh, proposal on my part. I think the decentralization the uh, a number of the existence of uh, several centers at the same time could be a strong or a weak side could could be a strong side a strong suit if every of such coordinating centers Like what we have the CC, the now the Stantikhanovsky headquarters, and other platforms. If every of such centers would clearly concentrate on something that this platform will take care of, any specific activity. This would contribute to building of rational a link between various centers. In this case, if it's clearly why can't they work together? It would be great if on the new the new stage, and I will mention this later, if once a month, these centers have a virtual meeting discussing coordination of efforts. This would be a, a, an attempt not to achieve the centralization, but uh, an attempt to achieve some unity, including the unity on the agenda. Do you think it's possible? Not so long ago, I joined a similar meeting Svetlana Tikhanovska cabinet held a special meeting for various representatives of the democratic forces, but that was initiated by the Svetlana Tikhanovska cabinet. So once a month, or more often, less often, the centers could get together to def discuss the like further activities. They uh, would, the access to such conferences should be given to various actors and people. I understand the issues of security is important here. I think it's uh, critical right now. I may be mistaken, but uh, I think we, uh, Witness, and we have been witnessing at least the current council and the Svetlana Tikhanovska's cabinet and the leading forces. We have been uh, working towards the short term scenario, thinking that we need two more months, six more months, 12 more months. So we 
we were working based on the revolutionary breakthrough of the August of 2020. But a year later, I have a feeling that we need to build a long-term period. Well, hopefully it will not be similar to solidarity movement in Poland, but uh, still, thank you. Andrei, would you like to react to this? First and foremost, as to the regular communication, it has never stopped since August 2020 after the political campaign was over. And the structures that were formed were, uh, were communicating. Since then, they have been communicating actively. Well, it's not uh, an easy process. It's not as smooth as uh, you, may, you may imagine, but sometimes we find a middle ground, sometimes we don't, but it does exist. As to the long-term strategy, we have been discussing this for a long time. We believe that we all understand the situation now is more long term. So we should not simply solve this by regularly getting together, but we need to declare our strategic goals and discuss the mechanism of public responsibility. Similar to what, what Ms. Mm, uh, Mr. Matskevich suggested in May. Here I'm uh, talking about the memorandum, memo about uh, understanding signed by various democratic forces. So when uh, a structure of responsibility arises, we will be able to take over such activities. So, but consultations as such do not solve this issue. Last uh, thing I wanted to say is that the strategic work today, when we don't know what will happen next, requires particular organizations of this process. It's not enough to declare that we have a unity. It's not enough to regularly meet, discuss this. We need to have a special process involving stakeholders and experts that would allow for uh, to build a long-term strategy. Possibly there are other people, other regimes that could do that. But these are three main approaches that we need, three things that we need to implement. I would like to add that it will take just a minute. The word coordinating in the Coordinating Council means coordination. And of course, we have weekly Zoom sessions with the office and the communication processes established between us and other representatives of the democratic forces. Where we can, we always communicate. The joint meeting that you mentioned took place on the 10th of August, the next day after the election day. It was my idea to have such meetings, representatives of the Curtain Council, of the Office, of the NOW were there. It was a great idea, very well organized. We received the great feedback from the people because they could have an open discussion. I think we lack this. We need to work more on open format so that show to people our activities more. Here I will agree with Andre regarding the strategic approach. Strategy is a long-term thing. It can, it is subject to change, but we need to understand what 
we need to do in the short term period, but in the long term period as well. I think we all attribute to each other's work. Tatiana wanted to add something. I would like to note the following aspect that you mentioned. Like one of the options here is for each actors to have their own specific area of responsibilities. I think this division will not give us uh, the necessary result. It will lead to the division, not to unification. Indeed, the coordination issues are there, and they're better solved when we work together on concrete tasks. When we together are doing the, the same thing, so we should unite around a single purpose and not around a single memo. We are working on the priorities and strategic tasks. We define this period as a midterm, and all came to the conclusion that this is the right strategy. But the real unification happens around actions when the priorities have been decided upon and all the actors are getting together, we witness a coordination. It is very important and we shouldn't give separate functions to separate bodies. We're running out of time, so uh, my last question, Vladislav Gunter, from Civic Belarus. This question is as follows. How can uh, the civil society and civil actors be supporting Belarus now in the atmosphere of fear and when the authorities recognize them as illegal? Since it's about uh, civil initiatives, I will answer this question. First, uh, majority of people who took part in the activity of the civil society organizations, they remain in Belarus and they can keep and continue their activities. Almost all organizations, after they were officially liquidated, made a statement about their continued activities. Secondly, in Belarus, there has never, has always been a big number of organizations like uh, the Human Rights Center, Vesna, who have not been registered officially, despite all the pressure, have uh, been actually actively working. In... So what we can say, the rumors that the Belarusian civil society is dead are not true. Despite the pressure of the Belarusian regime, the Belarusian civil society lives on, but they take different, the work takes different shape. Tatiana Khomic, please. I would like to add that today, any public activity in Belarus is not connected with politics. But like people who bring a parcel to uh, their relatives in jail, would get arrested and sent to prison for two weeks, for four weeks. However, people still feel they need change. And this year showed us that Belarusians are ready for solidarity. There's never been a, such a big number of active people or volunteers who every day make small things. They've done this actively, non-publicly. As an example, I could give you the projects of Viktor Babarika headquarters. We wanted to register a party, but it was not, we were not successful. But people said, let's do something anyway. The same is true about the Polizek initiative. These are hundreds of thousands of volunteers who are ready to actively participate. Any activity is fine here. 
here would say that indeed people are afraid, but they continue to actively participate. I would like to add one thing in order to help preserve the civil society, political sector. We need to provide the relocation of the managers so, so that during the harsh repression period, they will be in uh, safety and the uh, future they'll be able to return to Belarus and continue their work. I would like to thank the speakers and all the participants of today's event, everyone who watched us on YouTube. Please subscribe to us and like our videos and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Press Club, colleagues. Have a great day. Thank you and goodbye.